Good morning. I do hope you're well. This morning's reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, and is headed, Do Not Forget the Lord. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase, and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on earth to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these forty years, to humble and test you, in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. <clears throat> You may well recognise the passage, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, because in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus quoted it to the devil during his temptation in the wilderness. It serves as a reminder to the people of Israel, and to us, that there is more to life than material things. The writer of the book of Deuteronomy describes the promised land in much more detail than the familiar description of a land flowing with milk and honey. The land they were about to enter had everything they needed to sustain them. They had wheat and barley from which to make bread. They had vines to make wine, figs and pomegranates, olive trees to make olive oil that is used so widely, and honey. And there was iron and copper from which to forge utensils and weapons. I wonder how we'd describe our own country, and whether we remember to give thanks for all the good things we have. Our climate enables us to grow wheat, oats and barley. We have access to a wide range of root vegetables and fruit. And we have coal, a range of minerals, and bringing it right up to date, natural gas and plentiful wind to generate energy. Our so-called natural British landscape is the result of thousands of years of human intervention. Vast swathes of the countryside have been denuded of trees to allow more intensive farming and housing, and sheep have forever changed our uplands. We can use today's reading from Deuteronomy as a reminder that we have much to be grateful for in the plenty of our country, and we should reflect that it is nevertheless fragile, and that this abundance is not found in many parts of the world. We really do need to find ways to share our resources with others across the globe and to thank God for what we have. With that in mind, let us pray. First of all, a prayer for the environment by the Bishop of Derby, the Right Reverend Libby Lane. <clears throat> Eternal God, whose spirit moved over the face of the deep, bringing forth light and life, by that same Spirit, renew your creation and restore your image in your people. Turn us from careless tenants to faithful stewards, that your threefold blessing of clean air, pure water and rich earth may be the inheritance of everything that has the breath of life, and one generation may proclaim to another the wonder of your works. Through Jesus Christ, your living word, in whom the fullness of your glory is revealed. Amen. And we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine, using a prayer from Christian aid. 
We implore you, O merciful God, look with grace upon those who courageously defend their land. Remember the mothers and fathers, the innocent children, widows and orphans, the disabled and helpless, those seeking shelter and refuge, who reach out to you and to their fellow human beings, looking for mercy and compassion. Bless the hearts of those who have already shown great generosity and solidarity, and those who prepare to receive their Ukrainian brothers and sisters in their country's greatest time of need. Bring us together as your children, your creation, and instil in us your strength, wisdom and understanding. May you be praised and glorified, now and for ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together in the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stay safe. Our Monday evening prayers for Ukraine continue tonight at St John the Baptist Church. And remember that Richard Simmons will lead our prayers on Friday.